Good Sunday morning and welcome to the historic Rush Metropolitan AME Zion Church in beautiful downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. We welcome you to our virtual worship. Come and be filled with the Holy Ghost as we partake of the biblical bread of life. We believe that a breakthrough is right around the corner and we hope you enjoy this virtual Rush experience. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand before thy gates, O Jerusalem. How good and how pleasant it is for us to be in the house of the Lord. One more Black History Month. One more Black History Sunday. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. And since we're in the house of the Lord, we want to make sure that we invite him to be in the midst with us. So if you would please bow your heads and pray with me, Heavenly Father. We thank you for yet another Sunday, another bright and beautiful morning you've given us, another chance to get it right, and God, we thank you for that chance. We thank you that we are not snuffed out overnight, that we didn't stay in our beds and that our sheep wasn't our wrapping sheep. God, we thank you for all the things that you've done to us and all the problems you've brought us through. God, we ask that you will please bring us together, God, as you are in the midst of this service. We ask that you will touch us with your anointing, God, that we might be able to feel your presence, your power, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In honor of Black History Month, in honor of and celebration of our achievements, we want to sing the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Sing with the harmony of liberty. Oh, 
true to our God and true to our native land. Our native land sometimes is not true to us, but we are true to it, and we want to thank God for staying power. But even though sometimes we go through trials and tribulations, I know that all we got to do is just praise his name and we can have a happy day in Jesus. So we're going to sing that old, it's not a spiritual, but it's a classic. We're going to sing, oh, happy day, oh, happy day. yourself because self-care and self-love is the best thing you can give yourself and at this time we'll have our morning announcements and after that 
we'll ask our music ministry to come back and bless us with another great selection. And after that, we will prepare to hear God's word delivered by our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Maurice Alexander Harden. Amen. Good morning, Rush Metropolitan, and here are your announcements. All meetings will be held via Zoom. Please use the meeting ID number 556-977-4267. You can also use the conference call number 1929-205-6099. On Monday at 7 p.m. is our steward board meeting. On Tuesday at 11 a.m. is our Tuesday morning Bible study call that will take place via conference call. On Wednesday at 7 p.m. is our virtual Bible study. To participate, please go to zoom.com and input in the meeting ID number 556-977-4267. You can also join through the conference call by dialing 1-929-929. 205-6099 and use the same meeting ID. On Thursday at noon is our prayer call and the Deaconess Board will lead us in prayer. Due to the coronavirus, office hours have been reduced. A mobile office number has been created for the church. The number is 919-822-2174. Please know that we are doing everything we can to stay connected to meet the needs of the congregation. This concludes your morning announcements. Have a great Sunday. We are using the app called Givelify, and so we encourage you to download the app, type in our church's name, Rush Metropolitan, and give. It's just that simple. We also want to encourage all of our members. We are right now in the midst of our tribe rally. So see your tribe leader as we continue to move and reach our goals. Listen, I want to also say to you, continue to be safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing. And listen, now it's time for worship. So let's get back to worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. We've come to the portion in our service now where we are going to be dipped down into the storehouse of knowledge that we might be able to gather a little morsel of nourishment from the word of Lord, of the Lord, the bread of life. And we thank him for giving us his word. But we talk about the struggles. We talk about how we've come from thus far. God has given us a way that we might be able to cope with all the vicissitudes of life. And we just want to say it's just another day that the Lord has blessed me. God blesses us every day. And so we ought not be surprised when the Lord reaches down and touches us and brings us out of whatever it is that we're in. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day.
another day. If you know the Lord has kept you another day, can you just take a moment and celebrate God? If you know the Lord has kept his hands on you, that's a good place to celebrate God because you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't be here. Can you this morning just celebrate the Lord with everything you have, every fiber of your being, and just say, Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready for the word. And so if you would join me in your Bibles to the 34th division of Psalm. 34th division of Psalm. And we're going to begin reading at verse 1. Verse 1. We find these words from the common English version of the Bible. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise 
will always be in my mouth. I praise the Lord. Let the suffering listen and rejoice. Magnify the Lord with me together. Let us lift up his name up high. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to God will shine their faces are never ashamed. This suffering person cried out. The Lord listened and saved him from every trouble. For just a few moments, I want to preach from this thought. God still with us. God's still with us. Would you pray with me? Spirit of living God, we ask now that you would decrease the flesh of your servant and increase the spirit. Let the words of your servant's mouth, the meditation of your servant's heart be acceptable in thy sight that your people be empowered to know that they too can do the impossible. For the power of your son, Jesus Christ, allow us through this word to leave this holy place better than what we came. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. God's still with us. This morning, I need us to understand that we are bearing witness to and experiencing events that we never planned on. From the continuation of this COVID-19 pandemic, to the snowstorms in Texas, the acquittal of Trump, not to mention persons who are struggling with work challenges, health challenges, and challenges at their homes. We are all going through a lot. But this morning, I wanted to remind us as we continue to celebrate black history that God is still with us. This is important because you really have to understand that in the midst of what you are experiencing, God is still with us. I understand that what you are facing seems like a lot on you, and it seems like you have literally had to take all of this on by yourself. But the truth of the matter is, God has been with us and is still with us. And this morning, I want to help us because there are people who continue to face challenges challenges and obstacles and have begun to question if God is still there. I mean, can we be honest and say that we can understand why people would say uh, that why people would be uh, frustrated when they are doing what they are supposed to do. They followed and picked up the cross and followed Christ, but it seems like life has gotten to the point where the Lord doesn't seem to be around. And the other week I was listening to uh, one of my favorite preachers, Dr. To Jamal Bryant, who was making the point that your anointing does not exclude you from pain. Can I help someone this morning? Because listen, you can be anointed and still suffer. Someone needs to hear me. You can be anointed and still have heartbreak. You can be anointed and still have betrayal. You can be anointed and still be taken advantage of. Being anointed by God does not absolve you from problems. But what it does is help you get through the problems. Let me talk to the people who are anointed for a minute because, listen, I understand you're upset with God because you saying God should have kept some problems from getting to you. I understand you're upset because you thought that you were anointed, that nothing was ever supposed to happen like what you are experiencing now. But what I want to help you to understand is that you being anointed was never designed for you to get out of problems, it was to help you get through problems. 
See, God knew that you would come in contact with some problems, and so you have been anointed so that when you have your problems met, your problems would understand that they could not hold on to you. Someone needs to understand your anointed did not stop your problems from coming to your doorstep, but it does help to let your problems know that you won't be here long. And so can I tell you, your problems know that you won't be here long. The only person who doesn't realize that is you. And so listen, it's not that God is not with you. It's really that you haven't been able to understand what God was trying to do. See, God has taken care of your exit strategy. Someone needs to hear me. See, God knew problems would come, so he anointed you, and when he anointed you, you, he took care of your exit. And so here it is. You've been so focused on where you are instead of realizing that you are heading somewhere. I need someone to hear me. God has given you everything that you need to survive, but you're so focused on your present that you can't see how God has already fixed the situation for you. And that's why we are reminded trouble doesn't last always. I need some folk this morning who can really celebrate the fact that you are coming out of where you are. Listen, I came to help someone this morning uh, because your shout is in the fact that God will see you through. And listen, I don't know what you're going through, but can I tell you, you will come out of it better than what you went in. Someone's still missing it. I need someone to understand that how you came into the problem is not how you're going to come out of the problem. When you come out, you will be even better than before. And so here it is. You should be celebrating because things that are going on right now, things are going to get better. And you need to believe that this morning. You need to put in your mind that regardless of what you are facing, just know you are going to be better. Someone needs this because you're so stuck in where you are that you've moved in. You got comfortable thinking that nothing's ever going to change. You just got to learn to wait on the Lord because God is not finished yet. And I need someone this morning who has been shackled to your problems to understand that the chains are coming off. I know you're saying, well, pastor, I hear you, but wait a minute, how the chains going to come off when I don't have the key to the chains? Well, Paul and Silas didn't have a key either, but the Bible Bible says their chains came off at midnight. And I need someone to know at the right time your chains are going to fall off. And there is nothing that anybody can do to stop it because God has the last word. And so listen, in this time where you are dealing with problems on top of problems, I need you to understand that you are not finished. That you can celebrate knowing that you will survive. And not only will you survive, but you will thrive. That's the place I need someone to be able to shout because God is not just setting you up for your survival, but God is setting you up so that you will thrive. That's why scripture reminds us that you'll be the head and not the tail. Someone needs to know you're going to thrive. And listen, I understand you're looking at your situation right now thinking how in the world am I going to thrive because you're looking at where you are. Don't worry about that. It's not up to you how. You just need to know that what you're in is coming to an end and someone just needs to take a moment and celebrate God where you are. Listen, you need to understand that you are going to thrive. I don't care what nobody's told you speak to yourself and say self I know I'm in the middle of a mess self I know I'm in the midst of a crisis self I know I got trouble everywhere I turn but this one thing I know that God is going to ensure that I survive and I thrive and if there's anybody out there that just wants to say thank you 
you God on this Sunday morning because you understand that God is going to ensure that you survive and you thrive. But to help us understand, let's look at the text. In the text, we find David is singing a song. His song is a testimony of what he has experienced. You have to understand, David found himself on the run from Saul, and he finds himself in a place called Gath. And he goes before the king, and he is standing there. Servants of the king begin talking about David. They remember the songs that were sung in David's honor. Uh, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands. And when David heard, they remembered these words, and he got scared, thinking the king would kill him. And so David began acting insane. David began to scratch the doors. He began to let spit run down his chin, causing the king to have David leave. And David leaves Gath and heads to a fortress. And it's this experience that caused him to pin the 34th psalm. It's in this psalm that David gives God credit for protecting him. And when reading the story found in 1 Samuel 21, you don't see where it says anything about God. It does not say that God stopped the king from killing David. It does not say God gave David the idea to go crazy. But David spends his time giving God credit for something we don't see any evidence. And what we see in the text is that David has a problem. He gets out of it, but David recognizes God for him getting out of the situation. And for some of us, you still don't understand because you're trying to figure out why I should give God credit for something he had nothing to do with. God didn't do anything to help me, so why should I thank God? I know some of us are saying, why would David even bother to thank God when God allowed David to be in this situation in the first place, okay? Can I help someone out this morning? David understands he did not experience a theophany, but he understands that while God does not say a word in this exchange, God, David still knows God has something to do with it. And this is what I need someone to understand. Just because God does not seem like he is present doesn't mean he is not there. Because can I tell you, for every problem, for every challenge that you have, maybe out of, please understand God had something to do with it. All right, somebody needs to catch this. I know you're saying, well, listen, my ability to think on my feet got me out of a situation, but you have to understand that type of skill was given to you by God. I understand you're saying I was able to get out of my situation because I knew the people to talk to, but your connection with those people did not not come through osmosis, but instead God connected you with the right people. I understand you saying you had the resources to be able to pay your way out of the situation, but can I tell you, if it wasn't for God, those resources wouldn't even have been there. And so listen, David teaches us in this text that we need to learn that God is in it. Listen, this is why you need to celebrate this morning because you need to understand that no matter what you see, just remember God is in it. And no matter how many times you think it's you, just remember it was God. That's where David was. David understood that yes, he had a problem. Yes, he had to think fast. But David also understood that God had something to do with him getting out unharmed. And David never cared about the what or how. He just knew God did it. And that's where some of us need to plant ourselves. We don't need to worry about how God did it or even what God did. We just need to know that thanks belongs to God. And I need someone out there who can hear me that you need to get to a place where you can be like David and just know that God had something to do with your situation and that because God had something to do with it, 
you shall be blessed. Somebody needs to know God is working for your good. I need someone to know that you might not be able to see it, but God is there. Somebody told me that God is up to something. He's up to something in your situation. He's up to something in my situation. He's up to something in your best friend's situation. He's up to something in your family member's situation. You need to know that God is working for you. And here it is when you know that God is working for you. You ought to have a praise on your lips because you know that God is going to ensure that you're better. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that everything that I made it out of, I can give God credit for because I know that God had something. God had something to do with it. I'm at the place in my life where I understand God you don't have to tell me all the details God you don't have to tell me how you did it but how I live is by knowing that no matter what I'm in that God is God is God is He is gonna see me through But let me say this, some of us, the problem is, the reason you're so stressed out is uh, because you have cataracts on your faith. I have a good friend who shares that the issue for most people is that something is blinding them from seeing God. And listen, your prayer shouldn't be for God to hurry up. Maybe your prayer should be, God, help me to see you in the midst of what I'm going through. That's where some of us are. You need to say, God, in the midst of this season, just let me see you. Because listen, if you're able to see God in the midst of your struggle, it will change you. And listen, let me just testify. I can tell you that I've been through some struggles, but in the midst of what I've been through, I've been able to see God for myself. And listen, here is what I want someone to know, because even though I can see God, it doesn't mean that challenges or situations are over. But I feel better because I can see the Lord working on my behalf. And so listen, that's why I've learned to still smile in the midst of struggle. I've learned to still have joy in the midst of pain because I can still see the Lord where I am. And I wonder if there's anybody out there that's watching and listening that can just testify that I can see the Lord too. And because you can see the Lord, you know everything's going to be all right. This is for the real saints who don't mind giving God the glory because you know that the Lord is working because the Lord took the cataracts off your faith and you're able to see the Lord working and so while you're in the midst of your season of hardship you still got joy on the inside because you know that God is working for you. I wonder if there's anybody out there that just wants to testify I can see the Lord and somebody this Sunday morning has a shout your shout is not in all the material things that God has blessed you with but your shout on this Sunday morning is in the fact that in the midst of all your trouble in the midst of all your stress in the midst of all your headaches you can still yeah 
you can still see God. And I wonder on this morning, is there anybody that just wants to celebrate God for the fact that God has allowed you to see him working? I don't know about you, but I'm got to praise that says, I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I can steal, I can steal, I can steal, I can steal, yeah, I can steal, I can steal, I can steal, I can steal, yes, I can, yes, I can, yes, I can. And still seek out. But as we look in the text, there are three things that I want to pull out to help us understand this morning. Listen, God's still with us on the journey. God's still with us on the journey. David says in the text, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be in my mouth. All right, this is a familiar passage of Scripture, but I want to really unpack what David is saying. David says in the text, he is committing himself to bless the Lord at all times. All right. At all times means there is no time that David will not celebrate God. But David instead commits to celebrating the Lord at all times because David understands that God is with him at all times. No matter where David is, David understands God deserves the praise. No matter the circumstance, God deserves the praise. All right. Can I help someone out? I remember growing up here my pastor at the time, Bishop Kenneth Monroe, often say, you never know where you'll end up. And I didn't understand then as a child, but I understand now that this is a journey, that on this journey, we don't know where we're going to find ourselves. And here I am from a little place called Windsor, Connecticut, and now serving in the big city of Raleigh, North Carolina. Never knew when I was a child that I would be living and serving in North Carolina. Carolina, but it's where my journey has led me. But this is the thing. In my own journey, I've had some trials and tribulations. I've had to deal with tragedies. I had to deal with my mother being that gone at 17. I lost my grandmother. I've had people in my family sick. I've had to go through difficulty. But on my journey, I've learned God has been there. And so I understand why David says, I'll bless the Lord at all times because David understood no matter where he was on his journey, God kept on blessing him. Someone needs to hear this. See, you need to understand no matter where you are, God is there too. And so this is why uh, this is helpful because sometimes we can find ourselves in places and spaces that seems like can't get nothing to us. And I wonder if there's anyone who has ever been in a place where you feel like no one could get to you, no help could come to you. And that's what people who suffer from the thing called depression uh, feel like, that they feel all alone. Uh, but to the persons who are living in what seems to be an empty place, uh, to the persons who are living in what seems like a lonely existence, can I tell you that God is there too? And I know someone is saying, well, how is God present, but I don't see him? Well, here's the thing. If you call him, he will show up. See, some of us have been looking, but you haven't been speaking. And that reminds me of when I was uh, pledging for Alpha for Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I remember my big brothers took my line brothers and I out one night to what they called the jungle. And here we were blindfolded, didn't know where we were. And then they decided to separate us. And they told us uh, that we had to find our brothers. I stretched out my hands to reach out for my brothers. I couldn't feel anything. No one seemed to be near me. But my big brother said, 
call out to your brothers and so I began to call out to them and when I called out to them they responded and I was able to listen to their voices and I was able to find them. I came to tell someone if you call out to the Lord he will respond to you and when he responds you'll recognize that the Lord didn't go anywhere but he was there the whole time. Somebody needs to hear me that on this journey the Lord is with you and you should have a praise to know that no matter where, no matter what, you shall be like David and give the Lord a praise because listen here's what David found out. God is even in the worst places. Somebody needs this. There is no place God will not go. Come here Lion King some of you remember the scene in the movie where Mufasa was talking to his son Simba and they are on Pride Rock looking over all the land and Mufasa tells Simba everything the light touches is our kingdom and Simba asks about the places beyond where the light touches and Mufasa tells him he's not able to go there. Simba being a king as most kids do ignored the words of his father finds himself where he should not be and places himself in danger but right when he thought it was over his father shows up let me just tell someone even in the dark places that you find yourself not because of someone else but the places you put yourself in even after God said no you don't need to go there and you find yourself there you should celebrate because when God should have left you to deal with your bad choices when God should have left you to deal with your own mistakes when God should have left you alone you're here to testify that God came to that place God came and got you. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad because I found myself in places like Simba. But I also found out that when I'm in trouble, before I can say a word, I found that God, yes, God, God will, God will, God will see you. Well, listen, when you took a detour on your journey, hear me now, God was there. Someone needs this. Someone needs to know that God is still there in spite of what you have done. Now, here it is. That doesn't mean you're getting away with anything. It just means God applied grace and mercy. And I wonder if there's anyone who can just thank God for grace and mercy because it's grace and mercy that allow the Lord to stay with you even when he should have left you. Someone needs says, I just want to talk to the honest people this morning uh, who will admit it was God's grace and mercy that saved me. I want to talk to the people who really understand it was God's grace and mercy. This is for the people who don't want to pretend but want to say, God, I thank you for your grace and mercy. Because when I found myself in stuff I had no business being in, God applied grace and mercy. And some of us just have a testimony. Some of us can just say thanks be to God. Because God should have left me. But God, yes, God. God, he looked 
beyond your faults. He looked beyond my faults and he, yes he did, he supplied our need. And somebody on this Sunday morning ought to say thank you. Somebody say yeah, God's been good. Yeah, I thank you for your grace. But listen, God's still with us on the journey, but he's also with us jointly. David says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He says, he delivered me from all my fears. Now here it is, I want to make this clear that God doesn't need us, but we need God. And so God is still with us. And so David helps us to understand what he is experiencing is a joint effort. Because watch now, David said, when I needed the Lord, the Lord was there. David understands he cannot do this thing called life alone, but he has now committed to having a joint relationship with the Lord, meaning that he is committed to having the Lord in his life because David understands that when you add God, there is nothing that will stand in your way. For Scripture reminds us if God before us who then can be against us? Because again, David says, he delivered me from all my fears. Everything that David was afraid of, God removed. Now, this is interesting because fear is what prevents us from moving forward. Fear is what causes us to become stagnated. Fear is what prevents us from going to the next level. But because David is in this joint collaboration with God, God has removed what was holding him back. Somebody needs to hear me. See, I need someone to know that you need to invite God in your life because when you join up with God, you will find out what David is talking about because David helps us to understand Understand that those things that were supposed to keep him or hold him are gone. Can I tell someone, God is still with us because you've been set from some of us missed it. I uh, see some of us may be dealing with some problems, but some of us can testify that we're no, dealing, no longer dealing with the same problem. We're not dealing with the same thing over and over again because God is working with us. And someone needs to hear me say, Someone needs to know that the Lord will take care of it if you invite him in. See, that's the issue right there. You don't want to invite God in because you want to remain in control. You don't want to operate with God. And some of us honestly rather be God and not have God in our lives because you want to remain the head. But listen, that's not how this thing works. You are not God, but you can have access to God. And see, if you have access to God, you will then find out that's all you'll ever need. See, I don't have to have a fancy car as long as I have access to God. I don't need a mansion on a hill as long as as I have access to God. I don't need to be on everybody's social media timeline as long as I have access to God because having access to God means when I need something, it will be there. But you have to learn to let God in. And I wonder how many people this morning found out that when you let God into your life, God then provides you with everything that you need, even when you got enemies surrounding you. God will give you what you need. And so this morning, I need someone to know God is available and God will receive you. You just have to trust God. And is there anyone this morning who understands what it's like to live jointly with the Lord? You understand that every day may not be sunny but every day is still good because God is on your
your side. I need somebody out there to celebrate that God is, God is, God is on your side. And if you allow him in your life, you'll have access. Oh, I'm so glad I've got access to God. I understand oh, that we got a new president by the name of Joseph Biden. When Joseph Biden became president, they gave him access to top secret government information. When he became president, they changed his clearance and he was given access to things that will assist him in his work. But I'm so glad that yeah, I know I've never been elected president. I know I've never been a governor. I know I've never been a mayor. Never sat on city council. But I came to let somebody know I've been granted access to the Lord because I invited the Lord in my life. And so I found out that when I'm in trouble, I've got access to the way maker. When I'm sick, I've got access to a healer. When I got no money in the bank, I've got access to a provider. When I need food on my table, I've got access to the one who's able to keep me from falling. I wonder if anybody on this Sunday morning that wants to give God glory because the Lord has given you access. Listen, last thing and I'll be out your way. Not only when we understand God is still with us, that we understand he's on the journey. He works with us jointly. But when you understand God is still with us, it's joyful. All right, David says, this suffering person cried out. The Lord listened and saved him from every trouble. All right, here it is. David said, I was suffering. Now listen, this is important because David was in a place called suffering. And some of us have been in this place. It's not a fun place to be. And I can remind you now that David is in this place called suffering, even though he was a man after God's own heart. David was in a place called suffering, even though he was anointed king. David was in a place called suffering, even though he was God's chosen. And listen, I need someone to understand again, suffering is going to happen. I understand you may not like it, but it's going to happen. But look what David says. David says in the text, I was suffering. But then he cried out. He says, and the Lord listened to him. Someone needs to hear me. See, I've learned that I don't just have joy in the fact that God has blessed me. I have joy in the fact that God listened. Catch this. David lets us know that God listened to him. Now, that might not mean much to you, but to those of us who recognize that God didn't have to listen, God could have had the right not to listen, but listen, he listened anyway. And see, my joy is in the fact that when I called God, God kept an ear out for me. And someone needs this. I need to tell someone this morning, God is still with us and he's still listening to us. And I wonder how many people can understand that your joy should be in the fact that God uh, turned his ear to your prayers. Listen, because you know that as long as God heard you, you know that God will respond to you. And someone needs to see, once I pray, I don't have to worry about the outcome because I know the Lord is 
is going to handle it because look at what David says. David says the Lord not only listened but saved him from every trouble. Someone needs to hear this. David reminds us that because God has been with him, God single-handedly saved him from every trouble. Catch the word he uses. He uses the word every. Every means every source of trouble that David faced. God saved him every. Not just one or two, not just three or four, not just five or six, not just ten or twenty, but every single time David was in trouble, God delivered him. I need someone to understand God is still with us and so the trouble that you see now will not be with you always because just like David, God will deliver you. And someone needs to know that this morning you shall have a praise because you know that God will save you too. And I wonder if I have any persons this morning that just wants to thank God for the fact that he saved you every single time. Now can we be real? There are persons who could have helped you but didn't. They just left you where you were. But God didn't treat you like that. God instead saw you, listened to you, and ultimately saved you. And is there anyone out there that can just celebrate the fact that God, yes God, God, he saved you. I know some folk who knows like I know that God will, God will, God will save you. God will take care of you. And I've learned for myself. It's not what I heard. It's not what somebody told me. And I came to let somebody know. I know for myself that God will take care of you. And I wonder on this Sunday morning if you're like David and just want to celebrate you say God I'm going to bless you at all times I've got praises in my mouth because I know I know I know I know I need some folk out there who know for themselves that God yes God 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 he'll take care of it I need some folk who've got a testimony you've been through hell and high water but you can still testify that God 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 saved you but let me talk to the people who find themselves in trouble this morning I want you to confuse the enemy I want you while you're in the season of trouble while you're in the season of pain while you're in the season of sickness while you're in the season of brokenness while you're in this place called struggle I want to give God your best praise I want to to lift your hands in the air and give God your best praise you're praising God because you know that the Lord will yes the Lord will the Lord will he will see you through come on give him glory come on lift his name up from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same our God your God my God is worthy yes he's worthy he 
he's worthy of all the praise and honor that's to his name. I need somebody that's got a memory and you can remember how the Lord brought you over. You can remember that the Lord has been good to you. You can remember how God, he loved you enough to get you out of your mess. How God loved you enough to give you a way out. God loved you enough that he picked you up. Turn you around. Place your feet on solid ground. Come here. Let me tell you something. That's a place you should shout. Because when you learn that the Lord picked you up, that means that God picked you up from a place called sin. God picked you up from a place that was messed up. God picked you up from a messed up place, a dirty situation, a filthy situation. It was so messed up, your friends never came around. It was so messed up, your family members never showed up. But here it is. God, 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 God saw you where you were. And God said, that's my child. And God reached from the balcony of heaven. And God began to pull you up. And somebody this morning has a praise because you can feel you can feel you can feel God pulling you you can feel God's hand working on you you know you know you know that the Lord the Lord the Lord the Lord the Lord is still with you. Listen, I'm through preaching. I'm through preaching. Listen, here it is. I want you to catch this. God is still with us. No matter how it looks, just know God is still with us. And so listen, here's the thing. You cannot get worried about where you are now. You need to know God is going to see you through. And right now, this is difficult. Right now, it seems a little hard, but I need you to remember, this won't last always. I'm going to encourage you this morning because you need to know this is not the end. I want you to tell that to yourself this morning. Say, this is not the end where I am, what I'm experiencing, what I'm going through is not the end. That God has something more in store for me. And that God is going to see to it that I make it out of here. So listen, this morning, if that's you, and where you are, in your life. You just need prayer. You just need somebody who will reach out and pray with you and for you. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. And you got to learn it's all right. You don't have to pray by yourself. And so listen, if that's you, you need prayer this morning because you believe God is going to see you through. But this is a hard thing. And you just need a little bit more from God. 
Here it is. Somebody is standing by to pray with you. Won't you call or text the number that's at the bottom of your screen? And somebody will reach out to you. Baby, you're out there. You are watching and you're listening. And maybe the issue is you've never invited the Lord into your life. Listen, God wants to be in your life. If you allow him, he will be there. And so this morning, Maybe that's you. Maybe you have never invited the Lord into your life. And today's the day you want that to happen. If you're here and you're listening and you're watching and you want to be saved, I want you to text or call the number that has at the bottom of your screen and somebody's going to lead you into a relationship with the Lord. Maybe you're out there and you don't have a church home, a place where not only can people pray with you and for you, but it's a place also where you can grow into who God has called you to be. Listen, that's the place that you need to be. You need to be growing. And so that's what the church is designed to help you along your journey. And so maybe you're out there and you want to be a part of this ministry, this church called Rush. And I understand we're not able to gather in person, but the doors of the church remain open for you. All you have to do is text or call the number that's at the bottom of your screen. And somebody's going to reach out to you. We're getting ready to pray. And you should know by now what I'm going to ask you. I say it every Sunday. Listen, if you're watching with someone, would you grab that, their hand? If you're watching by yourself, just stretch your hand to the screen because we're going to pray together. So I believe in praying together. I believe in being on one accord. So let us pray. Spirit of living God, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you reminded us that you're still with us. And God, we're grateful that for that because we understand that is a gift you've given us. Because, Lord, the truth of the matter is you should not want to stay by our side. We have sinned. We've fallen short of your word. But you still are there with us. So, God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. But, God, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask, God, that you would help us to stay on the way that you are calling us to. Help us not to get distracted, but help us to be able to stand firm and stay focused on the mission you've assigned us to. God, this morning we're praying because we understand there are those who are watching and listening, those who are out there and they understand where they are is not where they're going to end up, but they also understand where they are is difficult right now. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would give them comfort in the midst of this season. That, God, you would give them joy in the midst of this season. That you, God, would show them every single day that it's going to get better. God, allow them not to get discouraged with where they are, but God, just allow them to know that they're not finished yet. God, help them to know. God, you're still working on their behalf. And so, God, we are grateful this morning because we know who you are. 
but we know that you're working. God, we pray for those this morning who are coming to have a relationship with you for the first time. God, we pray for those persons who are connected with you. And so, Lord, we pray now that as they connect with you, that you would pour into them like never before. Help them, God, to know that you are the way. And, Lord, when they find themselves in trouble, God, give them strength that they would be able to hold on to you no matter how difficult it gets and let them be reminded that this too shall pass. And God, I want to pray for those who may be out there who said, I've been saved, but I walked away from God. I want to pray for them. There may be those out there who say, I want to come back to God. I want to get my life right. And so, Lord, for every person who's listening to this prayer, God, we pray in the name of Jesus for every person who's now committed themselves to come back to you. We pray that as they come back to you, God, that you would give them a strength that they will never walk away from you again. And God, we say thank you for what you're going to do in their life. And then, God, we want to pray. We're praying for those who decided to be a part of this ministry called Rush Metropolitan. We pray, God, that you would help us as members of the church to be examples of what it is that you have called us to do. Help us to be examples of your word. And Lord, we pray that persons who come into this space, come into this church family, would be able to grow in the love of Christ. God, we thank you for what you're doing. Lord, we're also praying for what's happening all across our nation. Persons are experiencing climate change. People are experiencing job loss. People are experiencing sickness. God, there's so much that is happening. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you, God, would have the final say. You, God, will keep on working. You, God, would help us because, Lord, we need your direction. We need your guidance. With you, we can do all things. Without you, we can do nothing. Be with us now, Lord. In Jesus' name, we do pray that the people of God say, Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to go home. And as we get ready to go home, we always close out with the affirmation of faith. And so, would you join with me in sharing together the affirmation of faith? Let us say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. God bless you.